Hello, and this is the first of its kind. I'm going to actually review a pattern. Um, what you see in front of you is the square and ripple pattern uh, in the four-way variation. That's not the standard variation of this pattern. So the standard is just a single square that radiates out. And I've actually never made that version. And I have a couple friends who have tried it and not had great success. Um, so I'm going to give it a shot, try it out. Uh, I need to make a couple of girl blankets and uh, a couple well, client blankets for uh, my office. And so I am going to use this colorway first, white, pink, uh, gray, and purple. Uh, these are Caron one pounders, and I can make a bunch of these four-way ones out of four of these. Um, it's actually five. This is white, light gray, medium gray, dark, medium gray, and black. So this is four shades, uh, five shades of white to black. Um, so I'm going to do a similar thing with these four with just one square radiating one direction. So it would just be like this portion here, but much bigger. Uh, uh, this is five uh, rounds, so I will probably need to do six to eight. I'm going to guess eight to make this baby sized, possibly nine. Um, I don't know my pattern yet. Uh, we'll figure it out as we go. As always, uh, I'm going to start making a whole, uh, at least two of each of these squares, which are the center of it. And you'll see that as we go, or as you go, if you've ever used this pattern. It is a free pattern. Uh, so I'm going to be reviewing this by using the written directions, not the chart. Uh, so there's your setup um, back in a GIF with uh, either an update or the end product. All right, I wanted to give you guys a quick update. Um, so this is what you get with the main part of the blanket before you put the edging on to kind of square it up. A couple of notes. One, it's really easy, sorry about that, on these little corner bits to get your count wrong. So be really careful. Uh, make sure you're counting your stitches. In the pattern at the beginning, she has a little diagram, a little picture that tells you what to expect in the up and the down. Do count, count, absolutely count. Um, this little step stair, step part. Really easy to get off on your counts. Um, you're supposed to have eight of these uh, doubles with a space. It's really easy to only have seven that you can see actually right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I have eight here. So I fixed it, I think, here in the pink. Uh, so really watch what you're doing. The second thing is in the written part of the instructions, there's no instruction for what I'm doing with my white, last white round. I ended with the pink as my last um, one, and I was about to go do the edging but then I saw in the chart, I hadn't planned to look at the chart, uh, but it was there. And I noticed, because everything is color coded, that she didn't have, that she had a dark blue round around the edge that didn't have a square. So a square up there. Uh, but that's not in her notes anywhere. So, do have to look at the charts. You definitely want to look at the charts. I don't think there's really any way to successfully do this without looking at the charts at least a little bit just to maintain your sanity because I would have started doing my edging and been off an entire row two rows because I didn't do this internal edging so there's no note about the internal edging before you do uh, the beginning of the even up so I'm gonna start the even up where we're gonna fill in the space here and there I'm using my bed because it's the only really convenient place to put a blanket this size. This is pretty big. I'll put my hand on it so you can see. Um, it's really well sized. I think this bottom section, if we were to square up to here, is probably 18 by 18. So I've, I've made it bigger than I anticipated. It's going to be more than 36 inches wide, I would I believe. Or maybe just exactly 36 inches wide. Uh, maybe a little bigger than I expected. And that's okay. Uh, I think it looks pretty good, actually. I'm, I'm really happy with the colorway I chose. Um, dark, light, dark, light. Dark, light, dark, light. 
Um, so every other with the color and every other with the gray and white looks kind of pretty. I enjoy the way it turned out, uh, but not a fan of the fact that I couldn't have figured this out readily without looking at the charts. So it's definitely a pattern for those of you who read charts. I don't think I would recommend this pattern to someone who's really a uh, text only kind of crocheter. So there's that. But if you are a chart friendly person, I highly recommend this pattern so far. So we'll see what I, ha I get to when I finish doing the square off. So I'm gonna do this this way and then I'm actually gonna go do it again bi-directional. Because as I noted before, I've only ever done the four point. But I really think a bi-directional in neutral colors would be gorgeous. Uh, maybe like white, gray, yellow, and green uh, or something like that. I think that'd be really pretty. Uh, so I'll try that one next. Um, see how that goes. Won't have to do quite so many repeats. Probably only need to do like one, two, three, four, and then around. So we'll see how this goes. Um, so there you go. There's my uh, one way square and ripple middle of the ground, the middle of the pattern. About to do square off. Be back in a flash. All right, so I am done. The square and ripple uh, classic pattern or the basic pattern uh, blanket that I've been working on uh, for you guys. And it really came out, it's lovely, it's beautiful, it's quite a pretty pattern. Um, I actually made a second one because my friend said that the pattern I made, or the number I made, number of repeats that I made, works out perfectly, but other numbers don't. So I'll actually be bringing you a second blanket in a moment after we look at this one uh, to kind of go over whether or not that works. I don't remember what the number is. I'll tell you when I come back. But here you can see I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven squares. So this little this middle portion uh, that kind of radiates up. Uh, so eight total color changes because that last round that you do before you start to even it up on the sides uh, is not a square round. It's just a round round. So, a couple of notes. One, it's not actually square. So, I don't know why. Maybe it's the size that I made. Maybe I made a mistake. I don't know that that's the case. Um, but it's 38-ish inches this direction. Um, so you can tell it actually ends here in this dark purple color. It's uh, just over 39 inches. But, pardon my messy room. I'm doing this in my room so that we can have some quiet. There's nothing else in my house is quiet. Right here along this line, best you can with one hand. It is um, just a hair off of square. It's about, I think it was about 39 and a half to 40 inches. So over eight rounds, seven squares, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven squares, but eight total color changes plus an edging uh, that you can't see very well, but it's essentially one more round of the same kind of pattern. It ends up being just off of square. And I'm not going to complain about this because honestly, who is checking your work that perfectly? If any of your friends are actually like measuring the blankets you give them, shame on them. But also, this is easily solved with a little bit of blocking. So it's not a crisis. Um, a couple other things to note. Your end over here will come out a little wonky. Um, so this is a little odd to work into. Uh, find what works for you. You can see it kind of if you work around the stitch, it just kind of looks weird. I think I may have liked to work into those stitches instead of around them. I don't know. 
Uh, but that's really any edging. It's not really, you know, anytime you're working through a end of a row, it tends to get that little weird look. Um, cumulative issues with this pattern. The fact that in the pattern written pattern, this one last go round without an extra square, not noted just in the chart. Um, the way that you do each of these, only the beginning edge is really shown, not the completion. It's not entirely obvious from the chart or the written instructions, what you're supposed to do. You do kind of feel your way through it because it does make sense. It's just, I find, uncomfortable um, if you thought you were going to have a pattern that was like a fully written out pattern. If you come into this blanket not expecting a fully written pattern or even a 100% charted pattern um, past one repeat in the way that she decided uh, to do it, it's honestly a delight. It's really simple. It's kind of easily memorized. You don't have a lot of extra work to do. You do have a lot of ends to put in. Definitely put in your ends as you go. This is not a wait until the end of the project pattern ends. Um, especially when you're doing these parts to even it up, it is a hot mess if you don't put your ends in because sometimes you do there and back Sometimes you do there and come back here and go back through. It just depends on um, some of these sections. Like you can see here, you only did one row and then you came down and you only did one row. So you have to go back and either start a new row here or go back here and do it on the right side again. So there's not a there and back possible because of how your yarn ends. You have to cut here and start a new row uh, with a fresh uh, um, chain. So it's not a perfect pattern, but you guys, this is really great. And if you check Ravelry, you can see some amazing stuff done with this particular pattern. Um, I definitely recommend, this is not straight. Oh, sorry, I have to straighten this out. It's getting on my nerves and it really does affect how well we can see that size differential. There we go. I feel a little better. Still not perfect, but it's better. So I recommend it. Um, even in this colorway, which is really girly, it doesn't look super like stereotypically girly. I would not feel bad uh, or feel weird giving this to one of my friends who has a girl and isn't into the super girly stuff. It has a nice, um, I like squares, architectural um, feeling things. It has a very architectural feel to me. You could also say it kind of has an Aztec feel. Um, I don't know if that's the proper term, but I, I think of Aztec blankets that you wore Navajo blankets. I don't know if those are interchangeable terms as far as the blankets, uh, but you may have seen blankets like this with these um, kind of stair step patterns. Um, I think those are the two things that I, I think of. Those two terms are the things I think of with this look. Um, it's cooler than your act average chevron. It's definitely um, fancier than your day-to-day -day granny square blanket without terribly much more effort. Uh, it's actually probably less effort than a true granny square blanket, but you get a lot more bang for your buck uh, with your rounds. Um, a little more effort than a never-ending granny style, but this is pretty cool. Uh, so I highly recommend this pattern, Square and Ripple. I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, the yarn used here was Caron One Pounds, um, and I have most of this yarn left. Like this um, is <clears throat> what I say, like 30, 41 by 39 and a half, and it's not a yarn eater. Uh, mostly thanks to the fact that you do every other round open, you really save a lot of yarn. So this is a yarn light pattern, which means the blanket itself is not super heavy. It's also really breathable. Um, if you live in a warmer client, make client client. If you work, hmm, let me try all those words again. If you live in a warmer climate, 
then this would be a great one for babies there because uh, it's breathable. Cotton would make this super light and breathable. Um, yeah, there you go, guys. Uh, I'll be back in a hot second or an internet second or whatever you want to say uh, with the other colorway that I did, just so you can kind of see um, what it looks like in a green and blue and white, just three colors, um, as opposed to the four colors I did here. Uh, a slightly different setup, so I didn't do as many rows of the actual pattern, and then I did more rows of rounds of um, edging. So it comes out to be around the same size. I think it's a little smaller, but it's similarly sized. I was aiming for about 36 by 36. There you go. All right, so last quick one. This is one, two, three, four, five squares, which I was told would not work up correctly by at least one person, possibly more. Uh, I can't remember, but definitely one. Uh, it does. It works fine. Um, I haven't gotten this pattern to fail yet. Uh, it is, again, just a real quick, I know I said like um, literally a second ago, uh, a little more than that, but whatever. Uh, in the previous little section, it it's not great if you don't follow patterns or if you need a very explicit direction in your pattern. But if you are like me and you can just kind of wing it, this is fantastic. It's kind of a recipe more than a pattern and I'm digging it. Uh, so what I did here was, uh, I think it's uh, one hook size up. I can't remember what hook size I used with the other one. Uh, but this was, I believe, an I. So it's a hook size up, so it ended up being less rows. Um, I think. Or maybe I didn't. Hold on. No, I'm wrong. It's done the same. Um, it's a little smaller, though, because I did a little less. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the other one has more, I think. Anyway, this one is a little smaller, uh, 36 inches in one direction. For some reason, it's not quite a square pattern. Uh, it's consistent between the two um, when you put it, you place it this way so that the uh, beginning square is in kind of, that little beginning square is kind of uh, lower right centered. Um, it, it's just a hair bit bigger. Uh, now this, and this one, it's not a ton. The other one was like an inch and a half. This one's just about an inch bigger. It's not a gigantic amount. And again, if your friends are whipping out their measuring uh, tapes, uh, measuring your blankets that you give them, you need different friends. Uh, but just to know it's not going to be perfect. Um, another couple things to note. You can see a little bit more here in this one. Um, it does get a little weird here. Again, you're going into that row below and it just gets a little wonky. Um, all of them so far have ended with this one little row of white or whatever color you end with uh, there. So it does get a little... It gets... Thick white and then thin white and then thick white and thin white. And th I mean, that's a little odd, but ultimately, I, I don't have any problem with this pattern. Um, so let me know in the comments below if you've tried this and it hasn't come out. I'm happy to try it again with a different number of starting squares. Um, let me know what you find. Uh, if I've also tried uh, this the four-way direction. Loved it. It's a delight. Um, I haven't tried it in any of the other directions. I'm probably going to do a two-way blanket at some point because uh, that's pretty um, in the pictures I've seen on Ravelry. Uh, so let me know what you guys think, how it's worked out for you. If there's other patterns that you want me to try out that you're not getting to work, uh, that maybe I can uh, shed some light on. Or at least give a shot and see if it's the pattern or... Um, just to be the way the pattern's written. Again, I'm, I'm good at winging these things. And if you need any help uh, or want me to, to try out a pattern, happy to do so. Have a great day. Bye.